Hey, I got a question in my live chat tonight from someone who had just purchased a Smith & Wesson Model 66 Combat Magnum. And the question they asked me is, is it safe to shoot full load Magnum ammunition through this Model 66? And the reason, of course, they asked me that is some older Model 66s, some people will tell you that the K-frames had an issue. They would crack their forcing cones if you shot full load 357 Magnum ammo through them. And I'm here to tell you, those people that told you that are absolutely right. That was an actual issue with the K-frame revolvers from Smith & Wesson, like the Model 66. Now, it wasn't a metallurgy issue or anything like that. It was a very specific issue. So I thought I'd take some time tonight to show people why that actually was the case and illustrate to you why it is perfectly safe to shoot full load magnums through the new Model 66. Now, the reason these older K-frame guns had a problem with cracking the forcing cones while using full load 357 is because when 357 Magnum first became popular, it wasn't quite as stout as it is nowadays. They didn't load it quite as heavy, but as it became more and more popular, the round became loaded heavier and heavier, became a hotter and hotter round. And because of the way they had designed the earlier guns, they couldn't handle that extra power for one very specific reason. And that reason is the forcing cone itself. I don't know how well you can see right there, but there is a flat spot shaved onto the bottom of the forcing cone. And that is there so that the crane will clear it when you shut the cylinder, so that the crane is not being stopped from closing by the bottom of the forcing cone. Hopefully you can see that little flat spot there that I'm talking about. If that hadn't been shaved off, the cylinder would not have closed. The top part of the crane right here would have hit against that and not allowed the cylinder to go fully closed. And when you shave off that little piece at the bottom there, you make a little thin wall right there that is thinner than the rest of the forcing cone, and that tends to crack right there at that thin spot. That's why the forcing cones would crack. But if we take a look at the new Model 66, that is no longer a problem. If you can see the forcing cone there, there's no flat spot on the bottom any longer. It's no longer there. The forcing cone is a full forcing cone all the way around. They actually solved that problem by filing off a little bit of the top of the crane right here where they don't really need all that extra metal. You see there's a little lip right there. They just filed a little of that off and now they don't have to file off the bottom of the forcing cone. If you look at the cranes right here side by side, you'll notice the ejector rod on the new one is thinner and allows for a smaller crane right there. It doesn't have to go up as far. It could be filed off a little bit shallower. On the other one, it's got that bigger ejector on it and that makes it have to have a little more metal on there. So what they did is they shrunk down that ejector and shaved down that crane and that made all the difference. So on the newer model K-frames, they took the metal off of the crane where it didn't really matter instead of off of the forcing cone where it started to matter when the rounds got hotter. So there you have it. The old model 66s back in the day, it was okay to file that little bit off the forcing cone because Magnum loads weren't quite as stout as they are today. As they got more and more stout, that design wasn't cutting it anymore. But nowadays, they no longer do that in the new Model 66s. They are an improved design, and therefore they can handle those 357 Magnum hot loads with no problem whatsoever.